Here we're going to introduce polynomials. Polynomials are a generalization of something we've seen already, in particular quadratic equations. Quadratic equations, here we have an example, uh, equations where we have x squared and x and x to the zero, which is just one, so it's the constant term. We sometimes proceed these with a2 and a1 with the coefficients and then polynomials are just generalizations. We may have x to the 3, x to the 4, in general x to the n and smaller powers, so x to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 2 and so forth. All these terms here, these are constants or parameters and we just give them these names a1 to a n and the leading term, so to the highest power of x, that is going to be unequal to zero. Otherwise, that term would just fall away, and then we would have a polynomial of the order n minus 1, not n. So that polynomial which you see here, if a n is unequal to zero, is an nth order polynomial. Here, we are now looking at a cubic function. So that would be a polynomial to the order 3, meaning the leading term is x to the power 3. That leading coefficient, a3, should then be unequal to 0. We also have x to the 2 and x, and at the end x to the 0, but that would just fall away as it is 1. Let's look at a particular cubic function. That's the one here on the left-hand side. f of x is equal to x to the power of 3. Okay, so that means uh, our a3 coefficient is equal to 1, and all our coefficients a2, a1, and indeed a0 are equal to 0. So that makes this very simple form. If we want to look at the graph of this function, that will uh, look as follows. For negative x's, we have negative values of the function. For positive x's, we have positive functions, and it has this sort of S-shaped form. The second cubic function we're going to have a look at is the one here on the right hand side. f of x is equal to 0 0.5 times x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So we have in these three we have a product with three elements and each x occurs. So when we multiply this out we'll see that the highest term is x to the power of 3. So it's also cubic. You can multiply that out yourself and confirm that what you get is 0.5x to the 3 plus x to the 2 minus 5 over 2x minus 3. So you can try that yourself. Now the first form here is however very useful because we have these three terms in parentheses and they change sign and these points are significant points for the function. So the term on the right hand side changes sign at the value of x equals 2. The term in the middle changes sign at x equals negative 1, and the term on the left changes sign at x equal to negative 3. So this gives us now four areas in the domain. So remember the domains, the values of x for which the function is defined. The blue, the green, and the dark blue area, in which the function will look slightly different. And what's important is what the sign of these terms is. In the blue area, the sign of all three parentheses terms is going to be negative. So altogether we get a negative term. Negative times negative times negative is negative. In the green area, the term on the very left is positive, but the other two terms are negative. So we get negative times negative is positive times positive is positive. In the red area, we end up with two positive terms, the one left in the middle and a negative term on the right. So altogether we have a negative term. And in the blue area, all three terms are going to be positive. That means altogether our product is positive. So that means we can already, uh, what we could do now is we, we're going to shade the areas in which this graph is going to live. Okay, it's going to be this negative area, this positive area. In the red area, y or f of x is going to be negative, and to the right here it's going to be positive. And you can already see uh, what the shape of this function is going to look like. It's going to look something like that. 
So the main characteristic of a cubic function is that on one end of the domain it um, diverges to negative infinity and on the other end of the domain to positive infinity. Which one it does so depends on the sign of the function.